So this is a Coleman BT200X, and at the moment it's pretty much stock aside from a few modifications that I've made, such as the bypassing the governor and stuff like that. But I'm gonna be installing a torque converter on this bike. And at the moment, as the bike sits, it's making about, gets about 31 miles per hour at the absolute max. I did manage to get 32 at one point, but I kind of think that was just kind of a one-off thing. Maybe the wind was kind of in my favor that day. But it's a pretty respectable speed, but I've heard people online saying that if you install a torque converter, you will get better acceleration, but you're gonna actually lose top speed. So what I wanna to do today is actually test that. Like I said, this bike originally, it gets about 31 miles per hour. I wanna see exactly how that gets affected once I install this torque converter. So in order to do that on this bike, the first thing you need to do is remove this cover here and expose all the uh, chains and whatnot underneath. What we're gonna do is buzz this off with a impact. Same with this one, but with this one, you have to remove this cotter pin here. So take the cotter pin out, pull that off with an impact, and this whole assembly should pull right off. You'll have four bolts in the back that you'll see in just a moment. And also, one of the key things you have to do in order to install a torque converter on this bike is remove this brace here. All this does is hold your uh, your chain guard in place. As you can see, I've already removed the chain guard to get this off. But it's not essential. If you do want to put this back on afterward, what you could do is take this off and instead just uh, weld on a bar from this side of the frame to that side of the frame. But this doesn't appear to give any sort of uh, you know structural significance. It's strictly to hold the chain guard. So we gotta cut this off. I got a reciprocating saw blade here, cut specifically for metal. What I'm gonna do is try to just cut at this weld here so that there's not a giant gaping hole in the frame. Because if you look pretty close, that weld is very thick. So I'm hoping we can just sit a saw blade kind of right up under here and just cut the weld, leaving the frame completely intact. So let's give that a go and see how this turns out. All right, so I've got my reciprocating saw here. Now, if you have an angle grinder with a cutting blade, I would definitely recommend doing this with that instead. I've never actually cut metal with a reciprocating saw before, so this is gonna kind of be, I guess, a trial and error run just to see you know, how exactly this is gonna turn out. I did order an angle grinder, but it just didn't come in in time. So let's give this a go, and hopefully this is gonna work out. I'm not just gonna butcher this frame. All right, so I see this is gonna take quite some time, so I won't bore you and make you watch this entire procedure. So I'll come back after I get this brace off. Okay, so what I ended up doing, just to make sure I don't just blow a massive hole in this tire here, is I took this kind of thick board here. It's all I had lying around. If you have a piece of metal or something, that'd probably work better to stick in here. It's just all I had on hand. All right, so I've got one side freed up here. Kind of hard to tell on the camera, but I would definitely not recommend doing this with a uh, reciprocating saw. If you have a uh, angle grinder with a cutting wheel, I definitely recommend doing that. This is horribly dangerous trying to do it with this and it's also kind of kind of risky having the tire right here and having such a sharp point on the end of this blade so definitely look into getting an angle grinder if you don't already have one all right so i did manage to get the brace off but i just want to say once again do not do this with a reciprocating saw this was horribly dangerous and in every way a bad idea and as you can see since i don't have a grinder to smooth this out I've now got these nasty raw edges all over the place, but not a big deal. Once that grinder does get here, like I said, I already ordered one. Once it does get here, I'll kind of smooth that up and repaint that, but that was a lot of work to try to do this with the reciprocating saw. 10 out of 10, would not recommend, but now let's get started on this uh, chain setup. I'll try to get this torque converter installed. All right, so we've got a 10 millimeter bolt here and a 15 sixteenths here. So let's get started with this 10 millimeter. Now you can take these off with a hammer and a wrench, but if you have an impact, it makes this job a whole lot easier. And then as I said before, for this uh, 15 sixteenths bolt, you've got a cotter pin here. So let me grab some pliers and we'll get that right out. Okay, and then this 
tensioner here. I'm gonna pull that down as we wiggle these two gears off and off comes the clutch. And then from here we've got, I believe these are 10 millimeter. Yeah, 10 millimeter bolts here. Again, if you've got an impact, this job is a whole lot easier. The okay. And now you're also going to have a bolt get this out of the way for you. You're going to have a bolt back here as well. I already took that one out yesterday and I was kind of testing all this out to make sure it'll work. So just know that you will have a bolt back there. Yours probably won't slip off quite as easily as this until you get that bolt out. Okay, so as you mount the torque converter, I've got one bolt in here just to hold it to show you exactly what I'm talking about. As you mount this torque converter, you can see there's not a lot of wiggle room to work with here. If you lift it up, it's going to smack and some bolts in the back and if you put it down it's going to kind of smack on the frame here so what we've got to do is go underneath here Let's see if i can get you a, a decent view at least and unbolt the bottom of the engine and what we're going to do is get some washers and we're going to raise this engine about an inch it's going to differ from bike to bike depending on your frame and your setup but on the bt200x anyway what we're going to do is raise it just about an inch to get a little bit more clearance so that we can lower this entire torque converter assembly down, at least on this end, so that these bolt holes will match up. You can see that bolt hole there is just barely not fitting. If you take this bolt, try to screw it in, it just barely doesn't fit. So we've got to raise this entire engine up as big of a pain as it is, and then hopefully this will all bolt right in place. All right, so back from the hardware store, and I've got this engine removed at least partially. And you can see here, this is what's underneath the engine. You just have these slots here that allows you to kind of loosely put the engine in place and adjust it back and forth however need be to get the chain tightened correctly. So when you pull these bolts out, they're about one inch long, maybe an inch and a half. It's kind of hard to say. And when you raise this engine, those bolts are no longer gonna work for you. So what you need to do is go to the hardware store and you're gonna need some longer bolts. These are, I believe these are two inch. And we're gonna run these up here just like that and then bolt the engine back down. And I know that seems super high up at the moment, but you have to remember we're gonna be installing about one inch spacers to raise this engine up. We're gonna do that with these washers here. We're just gonna stack these washers up until this clutch over here, or torque converter, torque converter, <laughs> forget, torque converter fits properly. Uh, stack them up about an inch. I imagine that's probably going to take maybe six or seven of these and I'll get that started and show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so hopefully I can manage to do this one-handed. What I've got here is one of those two-inch bolts. I've put four washers on it and I've stacked eight washers right here. That's almost an inch, not quite. And what I'm going to attempt to do, again, if I can do this one-handed, or at least give you the general idea, is stack them up just like this to where you've got four washers underneath and then eight washers up here. Now, you could probably get by with a one and a half inch bolt. Like I said, I bought two inches because I just wasn't too sure how this would work. So as you can see, if you wanna just get the one and a half, that would probably eliminate you having to put these washers here underneath. But this does seem like this will probably work okay. I'm gonna give it a shot and stick this engine back on top of these bolts, which is probably gonna be quite the task doing this just with you know being one person. But if you have a friend that could help you do this, you definitely kind of take heed of that uh, because this is gonna be darn near impossible with one person trying to both lift the engine and attach all these. But I'm gonna get it done one way or the other and I'll show you guys what that looks like. All right, so I managed to get them all on here. I ended up using eight washers here, and I actually took off the washers underneath. I don't think I'd get you a good angle there anymore, but I took those washers off that were underneath, didn't end up needing them. You can see here that the clearance is actually pretty good without them, so I left it like that. They're only hand tightened at the moment. And I ended up also taking off the exhaust here because that exhaust just kept knocking on the frame up here. And it's a lot easier to just take it off. It's two 14 millimeter bolts and the exhaust pops right off. So once you've got that done, you want to leave your bolts nice and loose here so you can still wiggle the engine around to get your chain tightened once we get the torque converter on. 
So now let's get back to the torque converter and see if that's gonna mount up nicely on here. Okay, so the torque converter is still not quite fitting on there. So what I'm gonna do is go back to these washers. I'm gonna add four more washers on each one of these. And at this point, what we're also gonna have to do, since the exhaust is off, we're gonna have to remove this top case here off of the exhaust because now when you try to put the exhaust back on, even with just these eight washers that are already on it, you can see it's knocking on the frame there and it's not having a good time. So let's go ahead and remove this top part off of the exhaust and hopefully this will still fit back once we're done with this mod. So you can see here, once we have this outer shell off right here, the exhaust does still fit okay. And then once we get those four washers, that should still be enough clearance to keep us nice and safe. All right, after a bunch of twisting, jerking, pulling, and so on and so forth, I finally got it on and the wheel is free. What I ended up having to do, I'm not certain if this helped or if I just managed to get the right angle at the right time, but there's a heat shield that kind of goes on the back of the engine back here. I did remove that heat shield, and when I tried to fit this back on, it fit perfectly. Like I said, not sure if it's the heat shield or if I just managed to get the angle just right, but it is on now, so let's go on to the next steps in this process. All right, so our next step is to take this washer here, slide that right on there, and then take your spacer here. Whoops. First off, make sure you take this little washer off. That's the one that came on the engine. That should be the only one, yep. All right, so now we're gonna take this washer, slide that right on there, as well as this spacer here, slide that on there, and then we're gonna take the first part of our assembly looks something like this. We're gonna make sure this long shaft with the copper bushing is facing out. Something like this. And it was at this point that I realized that this torque converter is too large for this engine. You can see here when you put this piece on, I thought it felt a little loose. And you can look and you can see it is loose. It is far, far too large for this engine. So, as it would turn out, they actually don't make torque converters for a 5 8 inch shaft. But, basically what we're going to have to do is one of two things. You can either replace the crankshaft with a 3 quarter inch crankshaft, or what you can do is come on Amazon and for $12.88, you can order one of these adapters that comes with the adapter sleeve and the key. And this will allegedly fit right over the top of the shaft that we have out there right now. It'll fit on the 5 8 and it'll essentially turn it into a 3 quarters and it's 3 inches long, which I do believe is the link on the one out there. So I am going to go check that, but this is what we're going to need. I'll order one of these and I'll be back with part two, hopefully in just a couple days if this prime shipping actually shows up in two days. So while we wait on that to be delivered, what I'm going to do is go back around. I'm going to tighten all these bolts down that we just installed. And I guess just kind of clean and tidy everything up. And hopefully when that new part gets here, everything will go back together just fine. And we will have a torque converter on a 5 8 inch 196cc engine. But I thank you guys for watching. I hope that you tune in for part two when we can complete this build and hopefully get this bike running.